Morning, everyone. I'm very glad to be here to introduce about our thoughts about uh, network infrastructure. So my topic is how to make infrastructure more relevant to a better future. So as we all say, we are already on the way of a digital society. So life has been digitalized. And also the industry also make a lot of progress in digitalization. For example, in shipping, the largest terminal started running in Shanghai uh, last year. It's already only run by nine staffs. And the largest logistical smart warehouse owned by Alibaba is only run by 60 robots. So for this full digitalization, it brings a core value of uh, uh, automation and high efficiency. So come for future. It will be all connected, intelligent, full digital society. It definitely will bring more demands for the infrastructure. That's give us two challenges, the full automation and the extreme high efficiency. How to achieve this? There's one observation may help. So past two decades, we think there is two big shift in the in industry. One is for go online, the other is go cloud. There, there are a few common things we observed. First, they all change the way of deal, change the way of uh, consuming the products. The other thing is they, they stimulate the consumption and expand the market in a large scale. And another point that is also most important is they all achieve this by building a platform that interprets the intent from the end user hide the complexity and provide the simplicity and the convenience to the end user. That's why it indicates us for coming to full digitalization, one new platform may need to be built to unleash the power and efficiency of the network infrastructure. But how to achieve this and how to build this platform, we think no one can build this alone. An industry platform for intent-driven is needed. So there are four aspects need to be considered. Architecture, modeling, collaboration, and the ecosystem. I will talk one by one. So for architecture, so this diagram indicates us we really need to consider the architecture from end to end of a life cycle of operating a network. Start from a procure onboarding OEF till the design or service and the assurance and even test and verify it. So that will bring the intent driven and the simplicity to the application. So the yellow part is the automation platform. There are three key factors here. First is model driven. This will decouple the service design adjustment assurance from the platform. And this indicates there is no layered concept too much here. All the modules talk to each other equally based on event. And the second is uh, cordless. We can see there are two closed loop, separate the design time from the runtime. And this will give uh, extremely reduce the onset customization effort and uh, brings agility to the service. And another thing is important is uh, for architecture is flexibility. And the architecture should be alive, should be easily adapted to any new technologies, for example, the service or GraphDB. And one more thing I have to emphasize is all the architecture discussion should be based on code to avoid the ambiguity and the conceptualization. We have spent a lot of time debating too many terminologies. Let's not waste our time. So for modeling, I think talk about service integration, people easily mention the interface, but I'd like to emphasize on modeling. That's a key behind the interface. So for modeling, there are two key challenges. First, it's difficult to reach consensus. Second, even consensus is there, it's even more hard to adapt it because of the high cost of implementation. So how to deal with this? We think to simplify the service in a two-tier, that's service and the resource, the model. It's both recursive. 
And also, the service model more focuses on customization. For example, this L3 VPN could be with a firewall as an option, could be configured and modified dynamically, even without reboot the service. So the resource model more should focus on standardization to deal with the multi-window interoperability. For the second challenge, we have to make this model alive again. It should be based on code, and also test and verify in a real environment, and set a criteria to accept the modeling consensus based on some code. So this will bring the definite the friendship to developers, make the developer more friendly. That's it's simple and easy adapting. So come to collaboration. We think uh, because lack of uh, cross-platform collaboration, we are sometimes the innovation is slow, and the standard body also blamed as a slow, and the OSS, open source, is also too technical. So they all blame each other. So that's why we have to bring business, standard body, open source team all together at the very first beginning. So we start focus on real problem at the start and build a reference code for implementation based on open source. And then standard it on a needed base. Don't over standard it. And finally, back to business team with real trial and real production. This closed loop iteration will speed up this innovation and speed up the business iteration. And ecosystem. That is important to link the technology platform to business. The more partner involved, the more application and use case being leveraged, the more relevant we could bring the platform to digital society. But we are so used to build this ecosystem in an isolated way. Just as we each has a pond and backyard, doesn't mean we all can have a lake or ocean, unless it is can be connected in some way. So that's why we need to build the Apple Store for the network infrastructure. That's a global marketplace. So this global marketplace need to be extremely prosperous. Hundred times or thousand times applications should be put there. And also, it should be global access with a single release. And also, the common process need to be built to verify and based on the, some IT tools to provide the high efficiency. So this will share the cost across the window and operator and uh, save the effort for the whole industry. So as a window, our vision is always engage and build an open business fox and healthy industry platform. So look around, that's why we feel Linux Foundation networking did a good job and have a good start. It aggregated the community and quite fit in these four aspects as we expected. So that's why Huawei joined this Linux Foundation umbrella as a fund member. But looking forward, we think still something needs further to be enhanced. For example, architecture. We need a strong tech team to focus on to this target architecture and the technical vision to award this overlapping. Collaboration, we need a unified use case committee to make sure we are really targeting on the valuable scenario and the real deployment are committed. And the modeling, of course, we need to speed up collaborating with the standard body. And ecosystem, we need a unified verification program to lower the cost of certification and interworking. So we have to do this all together. So to summarize my talk, an intent-driven platform will be needed to, to provide the simplicity and to unleash the power and efficiency of the network infrastructure. No one can build it alone. We need an industry platform from these four aspects, architecture, modeling, collaboration, and ecosystem. Does this platform is ready? Can we wait for somebody to build it? This question is smart, but we need more wisdom than it. 
we really need to make it happen together. So based on that, I'm confident on our network infrastructure would continue to bring more value to the digital society. So stay with the game and bring it, the network more relevant to a better future. So thank you for listening.